So let me start with the record. Okay, I hope my screen is visible now. Yes, sir. Yeah. And let me start with Tableau. Okay. So I think this was uh, the chart which we had done on sheet one. Okay, and uh, we had saved this file as well. So that's the name of my file, session one, 2021. Okay. Now to continue, uh, please remember one more thing. Uh, whenever we are doing a Tableau project, there's a sequence or you can say a flow which uh, you have to uh, follow, excuse me. Now the flow is uh, to just give you a brief about it. You always uh, start with uh, connecting to a data source. That is the first step which you take. Then based on that, uh, the connectivity, it can be a single database or it can be uh, from different databases as well, different sources as well. Okay, so all that is possible well, uh, when we are creating uh, or when we are connecting to a data source. Okay, So first step would be always to connect to the data source. Second is to build some data views. Okay, Like this is one of the data views you can see where I have used one sheet here, okay, sheet one. And on that I have created a, a view where I'm displaying the region and I'm displaying the category and the sales value. Okay, and I have also made use of the segment, which is you can see. So each of them, each of the bar you can see has been divided into different segments based on the values which we have here. After you uh, create the data views, we have to, you know, enhance it further, you know, depending on uh, the requirement of uh, your requirement or might be the requirement of the client. And then we can go ahead and create worksheets. Multiple worksheets can be created. Then we can organize all these worksheets together on a and uh, together on a dashboard. Okay. So next step would be uh, putting all or linking all these sheets or the worksheets which we have created to a dashboard, and finally to a story. That will be the last you can say. Uh, step in uh, you know uh, any uh, given a tableau project okay story will be nothing but a combination of uh, the worksheets and the dashboards all together okay that will be nothing but a story okay and you can store this uh, file uh, you know uh, all of them in fact can be stored in the xml format okay which uh, can be opened and edited uh, in on different platforms as well like last time when we uh, stored this file, you know, we stored this as a Tableau workbook, okay, with the extension dot uh, TWB, okay. Now your Tableau workbook, uh, which has a, a extension of dot TWB, usually contains all the information of uh, each uh, worksheet from uh, whatever you have created along with the dashboard that is, you know, present in that workbook. It uh, has all the details of uh, the fields uh, which are used in each of the views which you have created. If you have applied some formulas, uh, all the formulas uh, applied to the aggregation uh, of the different measures which you have, even that is stored. And it also stores the formatting and the styles which you have applied to the different uh, worksheets. Okay, so all this data Actually, along with uh, one more thing, uh, even the data source. So the data source connection information is also stored. Uh, and if you have any metadata uh, information, which is created for that particular connection is also stored. Now, metadata will be created, especially when we are doing extraction, okay? So if any query is written or something, in that case, even metadata get stored, okay? In this uh, uh, .twb file, which is, uh, uh, Tableau workbook for, uh, type, you can see. Now we also have some uh, different types of files, you know, like uh, we have a Tableau packaged workbook. Okay, your packaged workbook will have a file extension of TWBX. So an additional X has been added. Now this uh, file format contains uh, all the details of uh, the workbook, like uh, what we have in the previous one that is .twb. Okay. 
the difference here is that it uh, the main purpose its purpose is to you know share uh, with the other tableau desktops and your uh, tableau reader users you can say assuming that you know uh, it does not need any data from the server so it contains uh, the data uh, the local data which we have connected to even that is stored in your uh, packaged workbook okay that is the major difference between a regular tableau workbook and a packaged workbook then there are other types as well uh, which uh, can used for different purposes like we have for this uh, tableau data source with a file extension dot uh, tds okay so tds is uh, a file uh, which uh, uh, stores the details of the connections uh, which is used to create the tableau reports and uh, which are stored in the files and in the connection details it stores the source type that is whether it is excel or it is some relational database or any other data source okay or sap or whatever we are using all that details are stored the type of source is stored along with uh, even the data types the data types of the different columns which uh, are you know extracted or which you are using in your worksheet is stored in your tableau data source fine so this uh, if you want to store only the uh, tableau data source you can store it uh, as a different file and it has the extension dot tds okay that is the extension for the tableau data source file then we can also have a tableau packaged data source like we have the tableau packaged workbook we can have a tableau packaged data source as well where the extension will be again dot tds and uh, x will be added so we have tdsx okay which is similar to your dot uh, tds file the only addition we have is that uh, the data is along with the connection details as well so you have the data along with the connection details here okay then uh, there's another which is important which is an extraction file so if you have a data uh, tableau data extract file which has the extension dot tde okay so e stands for extraction okay and this uh, file contains the data which is uh, used in the workbook file uh, in a very you know compressed manner so the columns and the data are compressed and this helps in you know uh, using the storage uh, in the best way in optimized storage uh, that is the use of uh, your data uh, you can say data extract file okay and this file uh, you know Uh, usually has to be refreshed uh, you know to get the updated data because it is an extract which is coming from the main source it is not always a live connection okay so extracts needs to be refreshed uh, multiple times so that uh, we can uh, you know get connected to the actual data source at the back end and get the updated data in my extract file okay so these are some of the files which uh, we have uh, in uh, tableau we also have some files like you know the bookmark or we can have preferences and so on but uh, we are not going to uh, you know go in there right now plus uh, uh, you will find that there are different types of data types which are supported by tableau like uh, we in r also we saw some data types last time so similarly we in tableau also uh, 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 they support there are some four categories totally four categories of uh, uh, data types which is supported by tableau and the first one is string type where string as you know anything which is enclosed in a, you can say single quotes here uh, is considered to be a string okay so any characters numeric value you know a sentence which is enclosed in single quotes will be treated as a string data type okay then we have this number data type which is having either a integer or a floating point number both are considered to be a number type and we don't have a separate uh, float type or a decimal type uh, uh, you can say data type which is available all your numbers will be uh, whether it is uh, with a decimal point or without decimal points it will be known as a number type okay so number data type is supported in tableau then two more are there one is your boolean uh, uh, you can say data type which is your logical value true or false okay so true uh, again uh, true or false is written in capital all caps that's one uh, uh, the third data type and the final data type is your date uh, data type which is date and date time also 
now tableau recognizes dates in all you know all almost all formats whether it is dd mm yy or you know mm dd yy and so on there are different formats which we have also seen in excel how to change the data format or date format uh, of a particular date so all types of uh, formats are supported by you know tableau and uh, in many cases you know the first thing you remember is your system date how your system date has been configured you know depending on that it is going to recognize that more frequently okay and tableau uh, you know it forces the uh, uh, you know, it also recognizes a string uh, as date uh, if you put a hash in front of it. So whenever I want to treat a string uh, as a date type, then I need to put a symbol hash in front of it uh, so that uh, it treats that particular string as a data type, uh, sorry, date type as well. Okay. So basically, if you look, uh, there are four types which uh, Tableau supports, string, number, boolean, and date or you can say date time okay where it time is also involved so if you want you can include uh, time as well in your values then uh, let us come back to uh, the worksheet here i'll go to a different worksheet together or uh, i'll add one more worksheet and that can be added from this icon here below this so if i click on this here you can see i got a new sheet by the name sheet two here which got added now let us see uh, uh, this uh, show me uh, tab, this window here, which uh, helps me you know, decide uh, the different types of visuals, especially the graphs or the chart types which are available. If suppose I want to now, right now it is uh, disabled, let us uh, select some fields and see how uh, the charts uh, option which are available here gets uh, enabled. So for this example, I'll select the order date. So let us go to order date here. So this is my field. I select, I click on this. Okay. Now I need minimum uh, at least uh, two, uh, you can say, uh, columns or fields uh, if I have to represent that as a graph or as a chart. So what I'll do is uh, let us take profit. So I'll come down here. Uh, profit is my measure name. So we have this. Now while selecting, uh, you know, I can press the control key because I want to select both of them. So I'll press control and then click on profit. So here we go. So multiple columns, if whenever you want to select multiple columns, see that you make use of the control key and then click on the field. Okay. So here I have selected uh, two fields from this particular table. That is your orders table, the order date and the profit value. I have not dragged and you know double clicked it or dragged and dropped it on the chart here on the sheet. Okay. As soon as I select this two, you can see in the show me uh, window here, you know, I have got some uh, charts which I've enabled. Okay. And the one which is recommended to you will be having, uh, you know, uh, uh, highlighted by a red, uh, you can say box. And you can see this line chart here, which is uh, highlighted which is recommended, okay? I won't go to, uh, I won't select this lines discrete chart. You can see this in the window here, okay, the one which I'm selecting, it says it's lines and it is a discrete chart. I want a continuous chart, so I'll select this one here. If I select this, okay, as soon as I do that, I get a chart here, which is a line chart, a continuous line chart. One more thing I can do is, uh, if suppose I want to know the values, the figures here, the, the sum, because uh, the values are not shown, you know, it's just a line here. So I can click on this uh, marks, uh, you can say uh, pan here, go to labels, click on this. Okay. And I can say show mark labels. So if I select this one, okay, as soon as I do that, and I click outside here, you can see wherever the point was uh, plotted, uh, the value of that particular, uh, you can see if you go here, you can see the profit value uh, for the year 2019 has been displayed. Okay, so label has come here and even a point has been displayed. Okay, so this is how, if you want, uh, this is uh, a ex simple example where I have taken only two fields. Now, suppose let us uh, remove this. I'll just uh, remove it by dragging and dropping it here. Okay, now let us say I have multiple more than two fields. Now for this example, let us uh, select the product name. 
so i have a, a product name press the control key and select uh, let us select customer name okay this two fields then will have some sales value so i'll come down here control and click on sales and i'll also select profit so control and select profit now what happens is as i'm i'm selecting multiple uh, fields from here you know some of the chart options are getting disabled and some are getting enabled fine that you can see now and the recommended one in this case is a scattered plot you can see that it is highlighted so let me select this one so i select it and here we get a scattered plot okay so this tells you that uh, depending on what uh, type of uh, you know fields you are selecting and you can observe your that uh, your customer name and your product name has come in the marks uh, you know pan here okay uh, whereas in the column and the rows we have the sums uh, value of sales and the profit so whenever i go to a particular you know uh, you can say mark here so this is my one mark i can see that you know the shape here it's a round shape and it gives you the customer name it gives you the product name the profit and the sales value as well okay if i'm not happy with this circles the shapes which i have you can see that one more uh, you can see option has been, uh, getting a uh, added here which is your shape option so i can always go here and select uh, the shape which i want let us say i want this this shape here so i get a uh, okay a circle which is uh, a filled one a filled circle or if you want some triangles or cross or whatever you want you can select from here if you're not happy with the options available here you can also go to more shapes and from there you can select any shape if you want so you can come here and if it is the options here you can see there are many options available okay so let us uh, select some of them let us have uh, now randomly i am not going to i am not happy with the other options available here so but just to show you uh, let me uh, select this uh, bug tracking uh, i will put this as bug and apply this and you can see this these are all my bugs out here okay so like this if uh, you are not happy with the you know the shapes which are available you can also go to the more shapes and from there you can select the shape which you want okay uh, any doubts like you know last time we dragged and drop okay this time what we did we selected the uh, fields first and then we went to the show me uh, you can say dialog window here a window pan here and from there we selected the chart which we want okay so if you are not happy with the chart you can always go and keep on changing the uh, different charts and once you are okay with it, it it is giving a better presentation you can select that one okay so this is my chart uh, for today now if i have to go ahead you know uh, coming back to some theory part there are different uh, you know terms uh, which uh, will be used when we are doing tableau like for examples i'll just uh, tell you some of the terms and their meanings like we have uh, the first term uh, alias uh, you know alias is a, a term which is uh, used uh, as a like suppose i want have uh, i have a alternate name that uh, uh, i would like to assign to a field or you know or uh, to a dimension member now here we have not created any dimension yet but if i have a dimension member and i want to give a alternate name to that particular uh, field or that dimension member then i it is known as alias okay a l i a s then we have a term called bin b i n bin which will be used by you know during this particular course as well and bin is nothing but a user defined grouping of measures if suppose i want to group two to uh, three uh, measures together okay then uh, uh, we'll call uh, in the, from the data source of course uh, this will be known as a bin okay then uh, we have uh, uh, a term called uh, bookmark now bookmark you might have done it in uh, your browser as well whenever you want to you know uh, keep a track of the uh, web page which i want to visit later on what i can do is i can use the bookmark so that its information is stored somewhere in the browser and later on when i want i can visit that so similarly we can have a bookmark now in this case a, a file is uh, created when whenever you want uh, to create a bookmark a file by the extension dot uh, 
TBM, TBM, okay, is created, and uh, this file is in the bookmarks folder, uh, in the tabloos folder which I showed you in my document. There is a, a repository uh, folder which gets created. In that, uh, another file will be a, a folder will be created by the name bookmarks. Uh, that will contain the you know the worksheet which we have marked it and this can help us uh, you know similarly like uh, it helps in the browser it can helps us you know quickly display a particular thing a uh, uh, work file also a worksheet as well okay so we can also have a bookmark here then we'll be also creating uh, calculated fields calculated fields are where you know we can create a new field altogether uh, using some formula and uh, <clears throat> excuse me formula uh, to you know to modify the existing field suppose we already have some existing fields here so if i from this if i want to you know create another field i can do that as well then we have uh, the keyword called uh, cross tab now cross tab is nothing but a text table you can see the table which uh, has the rows and the columns and some values displayed Okay, and it uh, uses the text to display the content, the numbers which are displayed is not in graphical format, but it is in text format. That will be known as your cross tab. Then uh, the dashboard, which I, as I said, a dashboard will be have a, will be created later on and uh, it contains, it's a combination of different views, you can see, which is uh, actually arranged on one page. So multiple, uh, you can say uh, graphs or charts or views or visualizations which you will be creating can be arranged on one single page that will be known as your dashboard okay and uh, whatever changes i do to my individual sheet that will immediately get reflected on my dashboard as well okay then we have a term called data pan okay data pan is this one here you can see here is my data pan okay we also have this analytics pan and all so all this uh, pan is, uh, especially this one is on your left hand side, as you can see, which displays you uh, the fields which are there, the calculated fields also will come there as well. If I have a group of fields, even that can be displayed here in the data pan. Okay, then we have uh, shelves which are there. The filter shelves are there. This is my shelves. The filter shelf, whatever filtering I am doing will be stored, will be displayed here. Okay, we have the format pan as well. Format pan uh, will come if I have to format a particular item. You can just, uh, you know, it contains uh, settings for the control for the entire worksheet. Okay, it also comes uh, when you open the format pan. We will see that as well. Then uh, we have this marks, which is there. You can see this one. This is your marks pan, okay, where we have. Uh, uh, the you can say the different uh, fields can be dragged and dropped here. It has uh, different properties like the type you have, the color, the size, okay, the shapes. The shape has come because of these two options here. Then we have this label and we have the tooltip as well. These are all the properties which are there on your marks. Uh, you can say uh, pan here. Then we have uh, the different shelves are there: the page shelf, the row shelf. Okay, and you have also heard the term as uh, the workbook term is which we'll be using. Okay, so these are some of the terms uh, which uh, you should be aware of. So whenever we use this, uh, you know, or there might be something which uh, whenever we are taking some example, I'll explain to you that uh, term further. Now coming uh, further to uh, your database connection, Whenever we go to your data source, you know, uh, especially uh, when we are here, okay, uh, we had discussed about uh, the live uh, connection. Uh, live connection, as last time also I told you, live connection will always keep on connecting to the uh, uh, Taboo server or the server to which I have connected the file to. Now, in this case, because I'm using the local machine, uh, so it is getting connected to the Excel file, which is a sample superstore file. And from there, I have uh, access to my orders table. Okay, now in case of extract, it is also known as in memory. Uh, uh, Tableau can, you know, process the data in memory by, you know, caching them in the memory. That means it is going to extract the values from the data source. That is, it can be a table, it can be an Excel file or something else. 
it will extract all that data and store it there on the machine itself. Okay, so it becomes easy for you know the person to uh, use that data. Now, when whenever we are in live connection, uh, if suppose the server is situated on some other, you can say, uh, center, data center, and I'm working uh, uh, on a cloud to server. In that case, uh, you know, getting connected to the uh, server is very difficult. Or you can see it takes lots of processing because it has to always update the data. So, you know, if you are live, you know, updating data requires lots of processing. And if the processes increases, might be your presentation or your, you know, the, your dashboard can slow down. Okay. That can be one drawback of live connection. So in many cases, you'll find that, you know, uh, uh, the project managers, they prefer using uh, the extract version. That means they'll extract the data and whatever is relevant, they'll extract that much of data and then use that to create the visualizations. And to update that, they'll always refresh that extract. Okay, that is how it works. Okay, now there's a, a very good concept about, um, especially when we, are, we can make use of uh, the combination of data sources, we can also have, you know, Excel file and some other uh, data source or access file or, you know, might be a relational database, which is also known as blending, blending of your data, you know, and uh, it can be also used. So we'll take one example later on when we come to the other data sources. So I'll try to get some data set and uh, try to get connected, but some related data has to be there so that we can get connected there as well. Okay. Now, coming back to some uh, practical thing, let us come back to practical enough of theory now. Now, there is a concept called drill down view. Okay, it's a very interesting, uh, you can say, concept. So for that, I'll go to the other sheet here. I'll create, uh, create one more sheet. And on this sheet, first of all, I'll show you uh, a drill down concept, which is automatic uh, drill down. Okay. Now, for that, uh, what I'll do is I'll uh, use a date uh, file. So we have a field called uh, order date. Okay, so I'll take this one and I'll take the profits. Let us take the profits. So I'll press control. Okay, and uh, let us go for a bar chart. So here we have uh, a bar chart here. Okay. Now, what is this concept of drill down? Drill down means, uh, you know, going into a, uh, you can say further down into a particular field, like for example, in this case. Now, if you look at this, uh, let us uh, do one small change. I'll put years here and I'll, sorry, uh, here and I'll take the profit down. Okay, like this. Now in this, if you look at uh, the option of the columns, you know, if I, you know, right click on this, now, do we have a, a drill down option that's not available here? Okay, fine. So I won't show it to you here, but I'll go to this capsule. Now, this are the capsules. It is known as the capsules here. Now, if you look at these two uh, fields, which I've uh, uh, dragged here in the columns, you see the year, but along with that, you can see this plus sign here. Okay, this is a plus sign. Whereas for some, there's no plus sign. Now, this is a natural, you can say, a uh, drill down so that I can go like uh, if I want to know the figures in years, I can easily get it because I do have uh, the order date here. I have just dragged and dropped the order date and I'm getting the year here. But if I want to know month wise, then what I can do is I can click on this and I get quarterly. I can click on this further. I get month wise. OK, if I want to uh, get go down further date wise, I can come here and get date, day wise as well. Now this is known as drill down and which is a natural drill down in this case, because it is a date which we have got. Okay. Whenever you want it back, you can always click on this again. Let us say I want to stick to uh, quarterly. Okay. So I can click on this and you can see this uh, for each year, like for 2018, it has been divided into four quarters. Okay. So the profit I get to know for uh, the first quarter in 2018, I can place my cursor here and I get to know that it is 3,811. Okay, so this is the concept of drill down. Now, as I said, drill down can uh, uh, you know occur naturally as well, but you can also create a drill down on some other types of fields. Like for example, let me uh, 
remove this. Let us say I have to remove this. Okay, still I'll get the quarter fine. So you get, see this, quarter one, quarter two, three and four, okay. Now for this quarter means all the years, it is combined this now. And this I can further click on this to get it month wise. Okay, so we can do all this. I can drag this down and keep only month and so on. Okay, now let us remove all this. Now, what if I want to create uh, something like this with some other field? Like, for example, uh, in your table, I have uh, two fields called category and subcategory. Okay, what if I want to combine this together so that, you know, when I drag this, let us say I have got uh, the category field. So I'll, let me select category and let me say this time I'll take the sales figure. So I'll take uh, control and I'll select the sales figure. And of course, I'll select the bar chart again. And uh, one more thing again, I'll put this up and I'll put uh, the category sum down. So that's, this looks better. Now looking at this, uh, you know, if you look at category now, you don't have a plus sign. Okay, that means it does not have any drill down, uh, natural drill down. But there is a field which can act like that. So what I can do is I can just drag this field okay, and put, drop it on the categories field here. So when I do that, it tells me to create a hierarchy okay, and I can give a name to this hierarchy. Let us give a name to this uh, hierarchy. What can we give? Uh, let us give as products because I don't think so. I have any name by the name okay name products name is not there so i have created a hierarchy by the name products i click on okay okay as soon as i do that now you can see this category has got a plus sign now when i click on this plus sign now i get the subcategory okay so what happens is let me remove this first uh, i'll remove this as well i'll drag and drop this products uh, hierarchy which we have just created so i can sorry i can just take this put it in the column okay as soon as i do that the first field which is there in this hierarchy that is category that will be displayed here if i change the sequence let us add one more uh, if suppose i want to add uh, let us say i want to add this product name okay i want to add this product name in this hierarchy here so there'll be, uh, I'll just have to drag and drop it here. So let me put it uh, on top or let us put it down here. Okay, so here you can see now, when I click on this plus sign, I get the subcategory. If I click this further, I get the product name. Okay, so based on the product name, my uh, sales value has been displayed here. Fine. Now, depending on the sequence, you know, if I have to change the sequence, I have to just drag this and put it on top. So if I put it here, you know, you'll find that again, let me click on this. Now you can see the first field is my product name. Now when I click this, I get uh, the category and then I can click this further to get the subcategory. Okay, but this does not look good enough. So the previous uh, again thing, uh, the sequence was better. So I'll just drag this down again and put it after the category. Now you have to just click on this. Okay, here we go. I click on this, I get subcategory, click on this sub and I get the product name. Okay, now this is how your, uh, you know, especially drill down works like. I hope you have understood this uh, and uh, next time when we come, we'll do something more because uh, because if I keep on doing, I can I can do multiple things uh, simultaneously and complete many things. But I want you all to practice this out. Okay, there's one option as well. Like, I don't know why it is not coming right now. So if I have this option here like this, and if I right click on this, you know, I get a option of, uh, you know, uh, drilling it down, but it is not coming. There's an option of drill down which comes here. Might be it was there in the older version. Okay, so if let me check whether it is there somewhere here. Oh, it's not there. Okay, 
I mean, it's okay, but uh, if, if suppose uh, you have an older version, in the previous version, I remember last year when we were doing uh, tab loop, even if I right click and select the option of drill down, it used to give me the, you know, the drill down effect and the subcategory like this effect used to bump. Okay, but as it is not available right now, uh, we, uh, we are not able to do it. Might be in the new version, they have updated it. Okay, and the option is not available. Clear? So that's one thing. You know, secondly, if uh, you want, uh, like, uh, let us say we put a segment here. Uh, do we have a segment? Uh, okay, I'll put the segment on the color. Okay. Now, let us say I have this uh, segment option, and if I want, uh, I can also put it in the column. Okay, and uh, if you have a table, you can always swap the values as well, depending on the sequence, how this values have been put. Now, if I put this, now this is not the right example to drag and put it here. But still, if you're putting it, then you can, uh, in the row, let us say you have a table. So let me uh, quickly remove all this. I'll just show you how to swap the values let us remove this as well okay now what i'll do is i'll put the year let me put some other thing uh, let us put order so order date i'll put it in the column okay and uh, in the row i'll put the category so i have this product i'll put it here and i'll put the segment as well because i want the values so here you can see now for the values which I want, I